Hello, this is Jay from A Stitch in Time in Bemidji, Minnesota. Back for another lesson on the Brother Embroidery Software BES4. Today I'd like to show you one of the neat features. Uh, it's called Monogram Designer. And sometimes you'll have a customer who just wants to have you whip up something for a receiving blanket, a uh, confirmation bib, or something like that. And you want to have something you can do up really quickly, but where do you pull all those elements from? And Brother did a very nice job of putting all these tools in one handy place. Go up here to Monogram Designer, and when you click in it, it will open up a new window. And this window has several elements in it. Number one, it has your monogram. And on the left side, you can see different styles of monograms so that you can use. And so you can just basically choose what's going to work for you. And there's lots of different variations in there. I'm just going to stick with a standard, uh, somewhat traditional monogram uh, for this demonstration today. So I'll click on this and it automatically updates this over here. Now we're just going to work with the letters here for a minute. On the right hand side, you can see that I have text A, text B, and text C. And so you can uh, change these letters to be whatever you want. So the obviously the first letter on the left hand is going to be your first name. And then the middle letter is your last name. And the, la um, the right hand one would be a middle name or if you have, uh, if it's for a couple, It'd be, it'd be the, um, the partner's first name as well. You can also change the colors of them by clicking on the little color swatch just to the left. Again, you can choose whatever format you want to use. And you can change that. And it'll, um, it'll change it here, but it hasn't updated it over here until I click Apply. And once I click Apply, then it'll change those colors and letters out to match. And so then I can go in here and change each of these other two colors to maybe match something that looks similar to this. And I can change that out. If I want to, I can change the whole style. Now on this, on this um, monogram style, they only let you use one font. Some of the other ones you can choose several different fonts. But right here again, I can click on the down arrow and I can scroll through and find one that I like, I think would look nice, and I can click Apply, and it will automatically put it in there. I can also uh, see what letters and numbers and punctuation are available as well. So if you're writing in you know, a different um, language that requires umlauts and that type of thing, you can um, get them, you can see what's available here in that font. I can also change the height of my font here as well. But if you notice there's these little stars in there and red lines around here, basically there's two other elements. These are uh, decors, they call them, or decorators, and they're shown because this box is checked down here. If I don't want them, I can uncheck them. I'm going to show you a little bit, a little bit later. And then this is the frame. This is the outside here. All I need to do is just click on one of the items. I can click on those little stars, which are the decors, and it says, do you want to change that star to something else? And over here, and right now, see at the very top says star, there's none. So I don't want to put anything there. So maybe I don't want something there, but I would like something down here. At this point, I can scroll down here and I can pick whatever I want. I can just select something like this and it will now change it. Um, I can put something over here. And that will space them out and they will evenly work together to be whatever they want. And there's just a whole host of designs in here that you can work with to add to your monograms to make them look what you want them to be. But maybe I don't want those things. I just want to have some sort of frame around it. I don't want to have any fancy stuff in it. Well, at that point, I can uncheck the decors and they disappear, except for the ones that I've already put in there. And so at that point, I can click the item and go back up here and say none, and it will disappear. I can click on there, go up here and click none, and it will disappear, and I'm back to the very beginning again. So it's a handy way of turning them on and off if you don't want them. The other thing is to click on the frame. When I click on the frame, it opens up the frame toolbox over here, and you have a host of different frames that you can use. 
and there are just I don't know exactly how many there are in here but there are just a host of them that you can play with and there's some that are obviously more you know um, girly for the little princess that you have there are some that are geared a little bit more towards the guys uh, I guess that's that could be either one there um, the little children's ones we have bugs um, you have just uh, I don't know if they have any sports or anything like that in here but these are just to give you an idea of all the fun things you can do with it now there's a lot of designs here and you, sometimes you wish you could look through these without having to scroll through them all here and you can if you were to go to if you were to plug in your USB stick that BES4 came on it would come up with um, the, it has all these PDF files and if you click on the designs it will bring up um, it will bring up all these they'll bring up a page of all the different options and designs that come with your software right now there's 151 pages and these are grouped these are the accents those are the little uh, things I was looking at a little bit earlier um, but if you scroll down here far enough past the accents you see the applique shapes and then you can see the borders these are all built right into the program and then these are all the frames so all the frames that I was looking at you can actually print this off or save this to your computer so you can scroll through it without having to look at them. it looks like there's 71 frames that you can do there's different text connectors and then there's split designs like I said there's hundred and fifty one pages of it if you uh, look watch the other lesson on working with the basic fonts if you open up the font folder it has the same thing as well it has all the different fonts print it out so you can see what they all look like um, and again there's 98 pages of those so you can see very quickly um, where the, those are the two first files there designs and fonts that enable you to look through this well once I pick something in here that I really like which I don't know that I necessarily really like this but I'm just gonna pull something here um, and just go with it and Maybe I like that, but I don't necessarily care for the purple. That's okay. Once I click OK, it brings it over into the main page. And so again, I can look at the top and I can see this is basically three and an eighth inches square, and there's 5,695 stitches. I can simply grab the corner and drag this, and it recalculates all my stitches and it keeps all the proportions exactly the same. Now I have 6,492 and it's three and a half. When I'm dragging it, keep an eye on the bottom left hand corner here where it has my size. So if I want to make this exactly four inches, I can drag this out to uh, four inches and that's a four inches in height and then it'll automatically recalculate my stitches. But talking about the color, I don't necessarily care for this color. Now they're all selected. So I need, to, if you can see, they're all selected because these are all blue. But I only want that to change that color, that purple one. So if I click out here on the outside, it deselects all of them. And I need to make sure that my mouse is, or that the select button is still highlighted up here. And then I click on the embroidery violet color, that is the uh, Floriani. And notice that because I have Floriani palette chosen here, it automatically brings in these colors into the Floriani colors. Now it's hard to see it there. But I want to select that and and let's see I'm just going to pull up something a little different here oh one thing I should also point out is you also have a search button so if you have um, a blue Floriani thread that you really like and I don't know if this is the proper one in here or not no that's purple um, I know that's not the right one but I don't know what I have the number here right now but let's say I want to use a, a green and my number is PF205. I can simply type in 205 and hit enter. And the very first one it comes up with is going to be that willow green. Now, because this is highlighted, I can simply click on that yellow, on that green, and it will change it. Again, I can go over here and I can change what type of stitch it is. I can change the density. And there's some other things I can't necessarily change here um, because of it being 
um, a built-in design. But let's say the satin stitches are too big that it's going to be, you know, like half inch long satins. I can change it from a standard fill to a carved fill like I showed you in the in the lesson on fonts. But obviously these are all nice fine little satin stitches and then I would be ready to go. If I'm ready to save this, there's you can either use the Wi-Fi system to send it to your machine if your machine is Wi-Fi enabled and um, BES4 comes with that Wi-Fi card. Please watch my other lesson on how to set that up um, so that your dream machine and most of the new brother machines with the adapter can use that uh, Wi-Fi card. If you want to save it for a machine that's not Wi-Fi enabled or a different brand of machine, you can click the little brother button up here in the top left hand corner and you can go to save as and then you can pick wherever you want this to be. I'm just going to put this on the desktop for right now and if notice I can save it as a paste setter outline files which is your BRF if I want to come back and change the font, change the, uh, the frame, or things like that later, I need to save it in the native file first, and that's the file I can tweak. But if I just want to save it to stitch out, then I can save it into any of my brother formats. I can save it in Genomi, Viking, Fof, Singer, Melco, um, uh, and even some other files like Pro Stitcher for the handy quilters for handy quilter customers. If you want to create this in straight run lines, you can turn send this to your um, Pro Stitcher and have it quilt this design out on your machine. So, same thing for the Statler Stitcher. So it's very handy. You would just pick whichever format you want, click save, and away, away you go. Well, that's it for this lesson. Hope it was enjoyable, and we'll have more coming.